Hi there, my name's Dr. Shaham Das. I'm a consultant, a forensic psychiatrist. I assess mentally disordered offenders in courts and in prisons and in psychiatric units. I also work as an expert witness giving evidence in criminal trials. This video is a brief summary of my thoughts on Andrew Tate. I'll explain my analysis of his persona and his character traits, why he's dangerous, and also my reaction to the latest news about these allegations of him and his brother committing sexual assault and also human trafficking. And also I'm gonna give you a brief psychological analysis of his feud with Greta Thunberg. So what are the character traits that really jump out to me about Andrew Tate? He is narcissistic, histrionic, opinionated, and he's the very textbook definition of toxic masculinity. So let's jump into a few of those things. People who are narcissistic tend to be grandiose. They have an inflated uh, self-esteem. They also uh, are very critical. So they themselves are very sensitive to criticism and they like to criticize other people. And Andrew Tate uh, definitely has both of those things. He, but he um, insults anybody who disagrees with him or has opposing views. He has intentionally tried to provoke people like Greta Thunberg, which we will come on to. And narcissistic people love adoration. There's often a hint of jealousy about their thought processes. So Andrew Tate clearly is a very boastful man. He likes to show off about his wealth and his lifestyle in lots of videos. He has uh, scantily clad bikini women around him. The other thing about narcissists and about Tate is he feels very entitled. He's made it very clear in a number of videos that he feels entitled to sex, for an example, and he talks about women as objects for his uh, and other men's sexual gratification. The other thing that's typical for a narcissist is a complete lack of empathy. And Tate has this because it seems that he doesn't care who he offends. The other thing about him is that he's histrionic. So this is not the same as narcissism, although there is a big overlap. They both like the center of attention. They both like to be adored. Uh, they, they like adoration, they like attention. So Tate will almost do or say anything for attention. Not necessarily, histrionic people don't necessarily lack empathy and they're not necessarily grandiose, but I think Tate is both narcissistic and histrionic. So I think an interesting question is, does he have a personality disorder? So both narcissistic personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder exist. I don't think he's got a personality disorder because of his unique uh, situation, and I'll explain why. Personality disorders is when these character traits cause clashes with people constantly and affects your relationships with others and it affects your functioning, uh, your ability to hold down a job, for example. Tate is highly opinionated and he has these very misogynistic views, but I think he's intentionally provocative and creating controversy is part of his brand. So he does this to get more attention. So the more wild outlandish things he says, it, the more likely he is to get on to bigger platforms. And exclusively to him, it also is financially rewarding. So being controversial is how he makes his living. So he gets attention, he gets followers, he drives people to his like manliness website, which is a website that offers training courses and get rich quick schemes and advice on male female interaction. I believe that the website is no longer up and running, but it had made him very successful and it had made him a living. So I used the term toxic masculinity before. What is that? Toxic masculinity refers to the notion that some of some people's idea of hyper manliness. So this perpetuates domination, especially over the um, females, homophobia and aggression. So toxic masculinity is like the idea that men need to act tough. They need to avoid showing any emotions. And this can be harmful to their own mental health as well as having serious consequences for society. So I think Andrew Tate's vitriol does exactly this. It's very damaging and it's the very textbook of uh, textbook definition of toxic masculinity. So the next question is, why is he dangerous? And I think it's because he influences impressionable young men. So there's a whole kind of undercurrent of men who struggle with woke culture. Everything from the Me Too movement and outgoing, uh, sorry, um, outdated previous misogyny is being challenged. And I think that scares some of these people. They're scared that their male privilege is being channeled as being challenged, challenged and it leaves them with a loss of a sense of identity. And I think that's what Andrew Tate is for these young men. He gives them this sense of identity. It's almost like he gives them permission to hold their sexist views. 
And I think this is very dangerous because he basically can weaponize the, gu the gullible and vulnerable individuals and potentially even encourage violence. We know that certain uh, followers of his, admirers of his have done things like um, uh, have actually approached and physically assaulted and threatened people that, uh, that have challenged Andrew Tate publicly. The other thing that makes him dangerous, I think, in this day and age is that he's actually very media savvy. So he's been very good at going on Twitter, making these short TikTok videos, and he's been very effective of spreading his misogynistic attitude within community of like-minded people. Okay, so moving on, I'm gonna tell you my reactions to the latest news. So as we know, Tate was arrested alongside his brother Twist, Tristan a couple of days ago as part of an investigation into allegations of human trafficking and sexual assault, which I should say they deny. The authorities suspect that the pair, along with two other Romanian men, are running an organized crime, crime group. So why is this relevant? What do I think? If these allegations are true, in my view, that makes him, Andrew Tate, doubly dangerous. Because previously it was argued, at least by some people, that Andrew Tate was partially a troll. So that he didn't necessarily fully believe in what he was saying or he was exaggerating it possibly even failing some of his comments and some of his beliefs just to try and gain popularity, to gain notoriety and to gain clout. But if these allegations are true, I think that shows that not only is he dangerous in, in that way of, of spreading hate, but he's actually dangerous as an individual. You know, this is a man who uh, allegedly is actively committing sexual assault. So what I'm saying is he's not just talking misogyny, he's actually going out and committing it. Okay, moving on, I just want to give you my psychological analysis behind his latest feud with Greta Thunberg. So, toxic masculinity looks for very specific targets. It looks for vulnerable people who have different values, especially woke culture, because woke culture is literally the enemy of toxic masculinity. So they look for these targets that they perceive are easy to mock. Greta Thunberg is a perfect nemesis for Andrew Tate. She's young, she's female, she can be very um, emotional as well. And tos in toxic masculinity, it's the opposite of that. It's, it's not showing emotions, it's being impassive, it's being cold. Greta Thunberg cares about and campaigns about the environment. And uh, she also shows a large degree of empathy. Tate is the antithesis, uh, antithesis to this. So he likes to appear callous, he likes to appear insensitive. That is all part of his brand. He shows this high amount of bravado and not caring about the environment is a great way to advertise his callous attitude. So he's basically seeing if he can provoke her. And he sent her a tweet saying, please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collection and their respective enormous emissions. And then Greta response was she replied, yes, please do enlighten me, email me at smalldickenergy at getalife.com. So I think this is the perfect response because it's not taking him too seriously and she's basically giving him a message which, which is that she doesn't consider him to be an intellectual equal. She's not trying to engage him in serious debate. Rather, she's kind of letting him know that she thinks that he is just a buffoon. She's replied to him like he's a petulant child, even though, interestingly, she is about half of his age. So those are my thoughts about everything that's going on right now, um, and I will get back to you and possibly ex expand on some of those things on my YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.